good morning everyone i am dr murli chand from india so today i am going to explain uh, abnormal cochleus and uh, in relation to cochlear implants okay this is the um, the whole picture of this abnormal cochleus so in the upper part this is the embryological development and this is uh, this is the upper one is the embryological development and the middle one is how we see the abnormal cochleus in the coronal section this whole thing and this below one is how we see the abnormal cochleus in sagittal section so when you want to study this abnormal co cochleus you have to correlate with the embryological developments then only you will understand and the whole topic becomes very easy or else it will becomes difficult so always you correlate with the embryological development and then correspondingly you understand the abnormal cochleus then it will be very simple too simple so uh, let me first explain the embryological development of the cochlea or the inner ear so it is arrest or aberration or combination so we are developing the abnormal cochlea due to arrest in the embryological development or aberration also or combination also so that is how we have to understand this whole concept next when you are uh, the next topic is when you are uh, seeing the pictures hrct pictures of coronal and sagittal images uh, you have to be very careful and you have to observe these five structures the first one is the cochlea and then the vestibule and the semicircular canals and the internal auditory canal and the vestibular aqueduct so all the inner ear structures you have to concentrate but ultimately we are inserting the electrode in the cochlea only but even then these structures also very important i will uh, in the future uh, in the further description i will explain how these things are also important so each one we have to analyze whether it is normal or aplasia or hypoplasia or dilated so these five structures you have to analyze in your brain whether they are normal or aplasia or hypoplasia or dilated now coming to this embryological development initially initially at the ectoderm this is the ectoderm a small placot develops that is called opt aortic placot then this aortic placot becomes aortic pit that means a small depression and finally this aortic pit becomes the aortic vesicle so this is the aortic vesicle so this aortic vesicle comes at the fourth week of the intrauterine life so the aortic vesicle that is this aortic vesicle is nothing but the common cavity uh, abnormal cochlea so this aortic vesicle if the arrest that is the arrest uh, this is the arrest so the the abnormal cochlea is developing due to arrest or aberration or combination so if the arrest happens at aortic vesicle point uh, that becomes the common cavity so this is aortic vesicle so initially it is aortic placot next aortic pit next it is the aortic vesicle so this is the vesicle and from this vesicle in the embryologically a small protrusion comes that is the endolymphatic sac that is the fifth week so aortic vesicle is at fourth week that is first month the importance of this cochlea inner ear development is uh, at first month you will develop the that is the fourth week you will develop the aortic vesicle by the point of eighth weeks that is two months the whole inner ear develops whole cochlea matures so the cochlea reaches the uh, adult size of the cochlea at eight weeks itself that is two months so endolymphatic sac at the fifth fifth week develops protrudes from the aortic vesicle and at the sixth week it this aortic vesicle the upper part that becomes the vestibular part and the lower part becomes the cochlear part and the west from the vestibular part utricular and semicircular canal develops and the cochlear part from the cochlear part sacul and the cochlea develops 
so that at the seventh week as it developing further and further at seventh week further cochlear rotation comes and the from the utricle and saccule this uh, endolymphatic sac develops further and eighth week by the eighth week this cochlear turns becomes the two and a half turns and the whole membranous labyrinth this is the membranous labyrinth development this aortic capsule also develops the bony labyrinth also develops and it becomes an adult size at eight weeks so by the two months that means eight weeks completion the cochlea reaches the adult size that is the normal development of the inner ear or cochlea so it is the aortic placode aortic pit aortic vesicle and then endolymphatic sac and it this common cavity division into vestibular part and the cochlear part okay coming to uh, this upper part is the embryological development and this middle part is uh, coronal hrct coronal view of the abnormal cochlea so this has given very much importance these diagrams i um, copied from jockler paper these uh, this coronal sections has given very much important importance in the jockler paper which jockler paper is the original paper which was released on abnormal cochlea so this whole topic is based on jockler paper and sinagrolu 2002 paper so this is coronal sections so initially when the arrest that is the arrest happens at aortic placode that becomes the michels 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 abnormality where you will see the internal auditory canal but the whole inner ear is uh, not at all there the whole inner ear is a simple small mass that is in this situation there is no option of cochlear implant you have to directly do the auditory brain stem implant abi so this is when the arrest happens at the aortic placode area it becomes the michels or michels abnormal cochlea next this aortic vesicle if the arrest happens at the aortic vesicle that is the fourth week it becomes a common cavity huh? and it may be a small or large based on the development uh, at the fourth week and around fourth week when it going to the fifth week so if the common cavity is small it is common cavity small if it is a little bit bigger it is, we call it as common cavity large this is how we see in the coronal ct so this is what is happening in coronal sections okay in the common cavity you, you in the hrct coronal you may see two projections this this one inferiorly this one is the lateral semicircular canal projection and this one is the superior semicircular projection so the in common cavity in the process of development the, uh, at the same time labyrinthine so that means uh, semicircular canals also develops so the common cavity in the coronal section may have two projections that is this one the left one is the lateral semicircular canal uh, like in middle ear anatomy only the superior one is the superior semicircular canal and the inferior one is the lateral semicircular canal so similarly here two projections so as we go further you see here this is at the fifth week this uh, common cavity you are developing a endolymphatic sac proje projection similarly if the arrest happens at this point of time without divisioning into this common cavity into vestibular part and cochlear part if the arrest happens at this fifth week this cochlea will not develop cochlear part will not develop so that is called cochlear aplasia that means cochlea has not developed only this common cavity vestibular without dividing into vestibular and cochlear part only this um, this common cavity uh, has two projections and there is no cochlea so how will you differentiate between the cochlear aplasia and common cavity that you have to appreciate in the sagittal section i will explain further so at this point of time if the arrest happens at this endolymphatic sac development a, a point of time that is cochlear aplasia 
suppose if the arrest happens at the uh, this sixth week that is the division of common uh, cortical vesicle into vestibular part and the cochlear part that becomes the cochlear hypoplasia that means this cochlear part is developed like a bird that is called cochlear hypoplasia severe so in uh, abbreviations in the literature they call it as ch so ch cochlear hypoplasia if it is a small bird only develops that is called cochlear hypoplasia severe if it further develops a small uh, turn comes that is called cochlear hypoplasia mild this uh, from bird stage from cochlear bird stage it is developing further if the arrest develops arrest happens at this point of time that is becomes the cochlear hypoplasia mild so cochlear hypoplasia means the whole uh, inner ear is lesser in lesser size than the normal that is called ch cochlear hypoplasia so in the dimensional wise the cochlear hypoplasia means it is lesser than lesser size than the normal inner ear the cochlea is also lesser size i will explain further in uh, this sagittal sections and next when the arrest happens further at the seventh week then it is called incomplete partition that means this cochlea this incomplete partitions uh, in, in 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 incomplete partitions ip is the cochlea and inner ear structures are normal in size so um, at i mean what i mean to say is incomplete partitions the development wise the size is more than the cochlear hypoplasia so if the arrest happens at the seventh week it becomes incomplete partition and at the cochlear tip area if you don't see any partitions that becomes the ip1 that is severe the severe and mild and here also in cochlear hypoplasia severe and mild was explained by the jockler but sinegrolu 2002 mentioned about this cochlear uh, partitions 1 and 2 she further uh, classified like this so to my understanding this jockler's understanding of incomplete partition severe i am thinking it as incomplete partition 1 if the partitions that is at cochlea partitions is very mild then it is called ip2 so normally at 8 weeks this uh, in a coronal section in a coronal section you are seeing that this vestibule and two projections this one is the lateral semicircular canal superior semicircular canal and the cochlea you will see only one and half turn that is the axis of the cochlea is uh, different from the coronal angles so that's why even though it is it has two and of two and of turns but in coronal section you will see only one and half turn okay next is the sagittal view of uh, the same abnormal cochlea once you understand the sagittal sections also you will try to differentiate between these abnormal cochlea let me explain so the first row is the embryological development and the second row is the coronal development the the, the same uh, coronal view of the abnormal cochlea and the third row is the sagittal view see here in the coronal cochlear hypoplasia what is the difference between cochlear hypoplasia and incomplete partition is the cdl that means cochlear duct length this is very important in cochlear implant the cochlear duct length is very less in cochlear hypoplasia so this cochlear hypoplasia is under development of the whole inner ear structures and the cochlea this incomplete partition is it is normal size but the partitions of the cochlea is um not complete that is called incomplete partitions so next coming to the sagittal sections in sagittal sections in michels you will see the iac and the whole inner ear mass is like a small uh, mass it is not uh, the whole inner ear structure is like a mass so this is in sagittal section you will see a small mass so in this situation you have no option of cochlear implant you have to directly do the auditory brainstem implant so 
that is the Michel's area. So if the arrest happens at Arctic placode, in uh, coronal view, we will see the small mass uh, attached to the IAC. Similarly, uh, in uh, sagittal view also, small mass attached to the IAC. So this is Michel's. So the only option is auditory brainstem implant. Now coming to the common cavity, in common cavity in sagittal view, you will see an IAC connected to the common cavity. This is very important. The common cavity is directly connected to the IAC. So when you are passing an electrode in the common cavity, there are higher chances of uh, passing of this electrode into the IAC. So this is common cavity. So what you are seeing in the coronal section, in a sagittal view, you will see this um, in, in this shape in sagittal view. So sagittal, in sagittal view, we see at IAC area, at two areas we will appreciate the whole things. One is at the IAC areas, one is at the round window areas. So in common cavity, the IAC is connected to the common cavity in sagittal view. Next coming to the cochlear aplasia, that means there is no cochle cochlear part development in the embryogenesis. That is at the fifth week, if the arrest happens, it is cochlear aplasia, this one. And you correlate this with the sagittal view with these two diagrams. See this internal auditory canal anterior to the internal auditory canal there is no cochlea. So this is only the facial nerve. Similarly in this below picture also internal auditory canal anterior to the internal auditory canal there is no cochlea only vestibule and uh, lateral semicircular canal present. So at the level of internal auditory uh, see in a HRCT the important sections are the um, uh, Axial sections. Huh? So, uh, in uh, coming back, uh, until now I told about this lower part as sagittal. Please uh, excuse me for that. This uh, this is actually axial. So, uh, axial view. So, this one is uh, embryological, and this one is a coronal view in HRCT, and this is the axial view in HRCT. The axial view again we see at. Uh, internal auditory canal, IAC level and at round window level. That I will explain further. So coming to here, uh, this one, arctic placode, if the arrest happens at the arctic placode, that becomes the Michels. Uh, similarly, in the axial view also, you will see a uh, mass um, lateral to the IAC. The, uh, there is no internal structures uh, in the ear. So this is a, a Michels. And this this one is the common cavity. Regarding common cavity, the axial view, the IAC is connected to the common cavity. So this common cavity, when you are inserting an electrode, there are chances of passing of this electrode into this IAC. So this one is the common cavity. And this common cavity may be a small or large, because uh, depends upon the development of this optic vesicle. And next is this one, these two diagrams are cochlear aplasia. That means in cochlear aplasia, uh, there is no cochlea anterior to the internal auditory canal. There is no cochlea here in both these two diagrams. That means here the cochlear part has not developed, cochlear part has not developed. So similarly, the, that is the reason why in um, there is no cochlea anterior to the IAC. Only the vestibule and the lateral semicircular canal present and uh, two types of things are there in this uh, cochlear aplasia if the vestibule is small the, that is one situation and in another situation vestibule is large this one so these two diagrams are cochlear aplasias and this whole diagram these diagrams be belongs to cochlear hypoplasia cochlear hypoplasia means the size of the whole cochlea and the inner ear structures are lesser in size than the normal one. So again, uh, the literature says three types. One is bud, simple bud. That means here, if you see in a coronal view, a simple bud of cochlear part develops. This bud, you will see in axial view also, similarly, anterior to the uh, internal auditory canal, you will see only a bud. In next second situation, the it is uh, the cochlea is cystic like this or the like this cystic. 
but the modulus at lower part the modulus is present in both the situations so this is first type and the second type this is bird bird type of cochlear hypoplasia ch1 this is ch2 that means modulus is present and the uh, cochlea is cystic in ch3 the smaller uh, the the rounds are there that means that these are basal turns the turns are there basal turns and middle turns and apical turns but the cochlea is very small in size that is small small cochlea and the whole uh, inner ear structure is also smaller in size or sometimes this third type ch3 less than two turns are present these are basal turns and directly this is a apical turn so less than two turns are present so in cochlear hyperplasia in axial section this is how you see in a coronal view severe and mild cochlear hyperplasia severe and mild the same thing in axial view you can appreciate three types and coming to this incomplete partition see in incomplete partition one or severe and mild as mentioned by the jocular if there is no partition that means the, the, the cochlea has reached to the adult size but there is no partition that means the partition between the basal turn and the middle turn and apical turn are compromised then it is called incomplete partition that means the partition is not there between the turns that is called incomplete partition that happens in the seventh week before the complete maturation in the eighth week so when you see the same incomplete partitions in axial view that at the level of the uh, IAC you will appreciate three things IP1, IP2 and IP3 first let us describe the normal axial view and then you will understand what is this IP1, IP1, IP2 and IP3 in the normal axial view this is the basal turns and this is the middle turns and this is the apical turn and the space between this is the modulus where the nerve cochlear nerve fiber is present and this lower part of this modulus that is called cubriform plate that means it is a sieve-like structure that means it is a porous through the pores you will uh, the cochlear nerve fiber passes that is called cochlear aperture COA so this is the cochlear nerve and this is the cochlear aperture COA and this is the modulus so this is normal normal at IAC level that means at internal auditory canal level in an axial view so in an axial view at internal auditory canal level you will appreciate two basal turns two middle turns and apical turn suppose if you appreciate at the round window level you will appreciate the basal turn above that the middle turn above that is the apical turn this is normal view now let us discuss this ip1 ip2 and ip3 in ip1 both cochlea and vestibule both are dilated that means in the process of development it is severe that means as the time goes that means from fourth week to eighth week the vestibule size now uh, gradually decreases but uh, if it doesn't decrease the vestibule also dilated so it is a cochlear vestibular dilatation and there is no partition in ip1 so you will have a external architecture in axial view at iac but it is uh, directly connected to the there is no modulus and directly connected to the IAC similarly in similarly like common cavity CC uh, CC also the common cavity is directly connected to IAC similarly here also in IP1 the cavity is directly connected to the IAC so IP1 is cochlear vestibular dilatation that means it is arrested before 8 weeks that means the co uh, naturally the vestibule size also is increased increase in size so this is IP1 coming to IP2 in a further say here uh, this turn this turn a little bit is forming that means the division between the 
basal turn and apical turn is formed. So, sorry, the division between the basal turn and middle turn is formed. So, that is the reason why you appreciate in IP2, this is the basal turn and the middle turn and apical turn. The division between the apical turn and middle turn is not there, but the division between the basal turn and the uh, middle turn is there here this one the partition is there so this is called one and half turn so what is happening is the partition between the middle turn and apical turn has not developed that's it so uh, naturally vestibule is also dilated so this is called ip2 that means um, basal turn is normal modulus is there cochlear aperture is there that is cupriform plate is there and uh, internal auditory canal is there and only abnormality is middle turn and apical turn are fused so it uh, the cochlear implantation doesn't make any difference in this uh, type of uh, ip2 it is almost like normal and the children also be, uh, in avt they behave normal next coming to ip3 that means the uh, the only this is x linked disease the modulus is absent and OSL, osseous spiral lamina are developed and the vestibule is uh, normal size. So what happened is when it is coming to 8th uh, week, the from 7th week, the modulus has not developed. So you will have the external architecture, normal size of uh, cochlea and uh, osseous spiral lamella also developed only thing is you you don't have this modulus and it is the cavity is directly connected to the IAC so in three conditions you will see the uh, cavity connection to the IAC that is one IP1 IP3 and common cavity this one so uh, the literature says in IP1 it is always connected to the uh, IAC but in IP1 and common cavity, sometimes there may this cavity may not be connected to the IAC very few uh, very few times uh, by a membrane structure. That's what the literature says uh, in co common cavity and IP1. But always in IP3, um, the cavity is connected to the IAC. So these. Uh, three diagrams this one and this one and this one are at the level of IAC in axial view these two diagrams when we appreciate the same thing at round window area see uh, at the basal turn this one at the round window area it is seen like this and if the basal turn is connect, uh, con directly connected to the middle turn and directly connected to the apical turn this is at the round window level and here in IP2, the basal turn is separate and the middle turn and apical turn are fused. So, this one is at the IAC level, this one is at the round window level in IP1 and this one is at the IAC level and this one is at the round window level at IP2. Thank you. Again, similarly, how we appreciate uh, the IP1, IP2 at uh, both internal auditory level and at round window area in cochlear hyperplasia also you will see at the round window area as like this a small knob this is the basal turn and a small knob in this situation uh, in this situation you will appreciate only the knob in axial views thank you one more point uh, see in this CH2 and IP3, the difference is this one is normal size. This is hypoplasia. That means the size is less. And another point is there is no modulus. And the, the cavity is directly connected to the internal auditory canal. Whereas here in CH2, here and here, there is modulus. That is the difference between CH2 and IP3. Okay, thank you.
So this whole topic uh, I prepared from Jocular Pepper and uh, Senegrolu 2002. Uh, today I came to know about Senegrolu 2016 paper is also released. So uh, in the coming days I will read that paper also. I will add information and release the separate video. Uh, until then you go through this video and try to understand this concept and read the two, Senegrolu 2016 paper that will make you easy to understand 2016 paper okay thank you